Oh my gosh, you spun me up! Yes, yeah, so I'm starting to understand where the ball's been. Hey guys, and welcome to our new studio. <laughs> Everyone, unfortunately, is stuck at home, but there's still ways that you can develop your game. So, number one, if you have a dining table, such as this, you can either put a great little gadget of net that we have, or you can put uh, books or whatever it may be. Imagine, like, if you don't have one of these nets, and it's obviously probably quite hard to get it at the moment, um, whatever you use, as Eddie said, cassettes, books, whatever, just try and make it about 15, well, 15 centimeters. Yeah, so it's about the correct height of a real table tennis net. You're gonna to have to either play with your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and you can start practicing. Now you may say that this is not great for my game, but in fact there is very good things here that you can develop, such as feeling and such as delicate touches. So let's give it a little go. What we'll do is we'll start with little touches. So we're still focusing on trying to develop a little bit of backspin on the ball. We're trying to put a little bit of a touch and feel onto this stroke. Develop short touch. So when you're playing here, just focus on trying to generate a little bit of backspin. And the way to do that is to take the ball nice and early, let the ball roll up the rubber. Let's have a look again. Under, yeah, under, that's it. Just try and get a little bit of backspin. So as I go towards the ball, I try to miss the ball in the first half of my rubber and the second half the top half is where the connection should be and that is where the most acceleration is when you're doing short touches there there notice my stroke and guys how now guys changed it where to start with he was going forward and then as he noticed that i was going more of a stabbing motion that gives you that little delicate touch and that backspin that you require. This stroke is more for a long stroke, long push. So again, let's have a look. Going for a little bit of backspin. Nice, good, okay. Make it a bit harder. We're gonna do an open rally. Now this is really good for control. As you can see, the table is about a quarter of the size of a normal table. And often players like to do really big shots. So this is great for practicing control. Another thing is, it's not your typical table tennis table. The bounce is slightly different. So it's also another, adapting. yeah, adapting to the bounce. And you'll see that it's, it's a lot more difficult than just your general table tennis. So let's have a look. You want to have quite a closed angle as well. Otherwise the ball's just going to go flying off the end. It's all about control. How many can you get on? Staying nice and low. So as you can see, it is possible to get consistency, but you need to take the ball nice and early, really soft strokes, and just have a lot of control when you're doing this. I found it really makes you focused. Yeah, really, really focused, focused, yeah, really focused. I mean, once I, once I lost focus, ball went off the end. You have to really concentrate on what you're doing for this. A guy sparked the inner, what's it called? I forget the name of it, but the inner what? tiger, the one that wants to win. <laughs> yeah. So basically what I'm trying to say is... The pit you... ball. Call me a pit ball. <laughs> <laughs> they used to back in the day, it's true. What I'm trying to say here is you can do those little things and ultimately you can have fun with it and just have some fun games. So here we go. First two, three, yeah. five. Five. Let's go. Level. <gasps> Oh my gosh, you spun me up! <laughs> Try and get a nice one. Ah. Yes, he's nervous. I'm telling you, I can see when he's nervous, his head locks up. Yes! 
No, <laughs> oh, I should have faded in. Definitely. Yes, it was a let. Good call, umpire. No feeling! What happened to magic touch? Yes! 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 Nedge! That's called a nedge, ladies and gentlemen. When it hits the net, hits the edge, a nedge. Beautiful! Yes! Game, set, match and I win again! <laughs> Nothing new there. <laughs> the next thing that you can do, which is fantastic, is just watch table tennis. Now I'm going to teach you how to watch table tennis. A lot of people, they watch it for entertainment factor. But over here, there's a few things that can help you to really understand what's going on and elevate your knowledge. So let's have a little look. So I've chosen my homeboy, Liam Pitchford against Susin, world number one. This is very recent. Now, tip number one I would give you is to completely turn off the sound. This is a great thing for you to start analyzing the game and not listening to the commentators because you're taking out a lot of information. But over here, you're just watching the game and observing as to what happened there. Liam Pitchford didn't contact the ball, which is a bit similar to one of the exercises with the backhand, how we said, where you lose sight of the ball for a split second. So I noticed that. There I noticed a nice little inside-out forehand fade wide to Susin's forehand, which won the point. So these are great things. You can also have a look at the body language, how Liam there chowed, which is a positive body language, which is great. So just turning off the sound is one great thing that you can do. This is a great thing for you to start analyzing the game and not listening to the commentators because you're taking out a lot of information. But over here, you're just watching the game and observing as to what happened there. Liam Pitchford didn't contact the ball, which is a bit similar to one of the exercises with the backhand, how we said, where you lose sight of the ball for a split second. So I noticed that. There I noticed a nice little inside-out forehand fade wide to Susin's forehand, which won the point. So these are great things. You can also have a look at the body language, how Liam there chowed, which is a positive body language, which is great. So just turning off the sound is one great thing that you can do. Tip number two is just observing the footwork. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to literally block half of the table and try and notice how Liam's feet are moving and see straight away how he bounced into position straight after the serve. Look how he stepped in, how he's on the balls of his feet, the way he's moving, how he's explosive. Now we see Susin moving, preparing himself on the forehand side straight after the serve because he's predominantly a forehand player. So it's really interesting to just gauge and look at the footwork. Beautiful footwork here, fantastic. And the third tip that I can give you is try to really analyze where the ball's hitting on the table. So let's pick one side and we'll only look on one side. So that bounced in around the middle over here on the serve. I'm looking at Susan's side. That's bounced in the middle and then it bounced over here. So I'm looking at the placement. Once the rally starts, look at that, it hit here and then it hit really deep down here. So I'm starting to understand where the ball's been put by the players. Liam put it here and he lost the point, which was interesting because it was quite an easy point, quite an easy stroke to play from a ball being played here. Notice here he went deep, which makes it very difficult for the opponent. And he went wide here, which again made him win the point. So just noticing where the ball is actually being struck. Oh, look at that. Down the line and then he went wide. Down the line. Very wide. Middle. Wide. Bang. Smash. Oh, he's still. Oh, what a rally. There, there, wide, very wide, still going, and wider, no way, oh, that's unbelievable, 
fair play to Sissin. What can you say about that? But you could see how Liam was spreading the play beautifully. Normally, against anyone else, he would have won the point. But great thing for you to watch out for. I hope those tips helped you. And we'll see you on the next video.